We good? Great. Okay, let me get this out of my way so I'm not lost. And again, we have um, class in session today. We have Guy Chet, PhD from Yale University, and he is a professor of American history. And his books and articles examine military, political, and cultural traditions in revolutionary America. He's also the author of My Brother's Keeper, The Complicated Relationship Between American Jews and Israel. And in this video, we will have a link to that book. And with so much in the news, international world news, um, even American politics now around the uh, Israel-Palestinian conflict, um, anti-Semitism, um, allegations of such, the existence of such, the history of such is really at a high. Um, this is affecting all kinds of communities. It's affecting uh, the athletic community. We had the Kyrie Irving thing, the entertainment community. Um, we have um, uh, uh, um, Ben Shapiro. Um, oh, what's the lady's name? The black lady that hates black Ken, people. Candace Owens. Candace Owens. Yes, that whole deal that, you know, as long as she was talking horribly about black people, she was fine. And when she... <laughs> said something about the conflict. She lost her job. Um, Kanye West, you know, um, his talking about fashion and the music industry and the history of the music industry. And um, actually a well-covered topic in a book I just finished, ashamedly, uh, that it took me this long to read it, but the autobiography of Malcolm X. That really? uh, relationship, oh, it's yeah. well-covered in it. No, 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 uh, I'm not surprised that it's well-covered in it. I'm surprised that... You just, that I just you, now read it. Yeah, oh, that's, yeah. I, I thought that would have been your the, the first yes, book in, but, in kindergarten. Yes, but Dr. Chase, you have to understand, I've only been smart for about a year and a half. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it was one of the books that always uh, kept around me. I read a lot of books about Malcolm X, but I just did not really, I, I needed to read it when I read it. Um, yeah. Because probably the most influential book, now I am not a Christian, so as is, I don't mean this in this context, but the most influential book I had read up until this point was the Bible. Because the Bible sends you to so many different sources of information, including the Torah, the Quran, the uh, Gita, and other um, revelations of understanding. I would say that the autobiography of Malcolm X is probably the most influential book I have read now. It has replaced the Bible in my estimation. Generally, when you hear something hyped up to be this great thing, it, it just can't meet the expectation. Uh, but that that did. So I was um I was very happy to finally finish that with, with a real degree of accuracy. But it, the reason why I brought that up was because the the anti-Semitism, the the relationship between uh, Jews and Gentiles historically, the persecution. I want to just take time to really gain an understanding of what Judaism is, uh, because I remember this was years ago, and I've 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 done some learning in the area, but. I was shocked to find out that Jewishness is three things. It is a religion. It is an ethnicity. And it's a culture. I always thought Jew religion. And I did not realize that there were categories of Jewishness as to where I could be talking about Jewishness and not be talking about Jewish law. So can you explain, just get into it? Now, I have some very specific questions, but the, the broad, what is Judaism? Yeah, so um, in the book, that the, the book you mentioned, um, 
So it's a book about the relationship between American Jews and Israeli or, or and, and Israeli Jews or the state of Israel. And we re, we the my co-author and I realized that the that the first thing you have to clarify as as a base level uh, terms of the trade for any reader who wants who we want to engage on this relationship is what is Judaism? What are Jews? Um, and you're right that in America, and, and we, we kind of go into it as to why in America, or why in Western Europe and America, there's one view, which is a very new view. It's about 150 or 200 years old, that Judaism is a religion. Okay? Whereas throughout Jewish history, Judaism was a family. Okay? You're born into this family and you have... Like, like a family, you have a culture, you have a history, you have your own, th this family has its own religion, its own special relationship with its own God, the God of the universe. Um, and so for Americans or for Western Europeans, or Americans, it's, it's hard to kind of grasp it, it, they have this understanding of Judaism as a religion, just like Christianity is a religion. And you can be right. a Christian and a German, Christian and a Russian, a Christian and a whatever else. Right. Um, up until about 200 years ago, that was simply not a question. You know, nobody, I'll say it this way. Up until 200 years ago, nobody asked, what is Judaism? That Jew on the street, does he belong to this religion or does he belong to a nation or, or ethnicity? It was simply understood, all Jews understood, and all Gentiles, Gentiles is a word for non-Jew, uh, all Gentiles understood Jews are an, a national group or an ethnic group uh, that has its own religion. Okay? Mm. And it was this mix, it's one thing. But then, because of Western European history and American history, where Jews for the first time were allowed to become members of the nation, when, when once kind of democratization happened and uh, Jews for the first time were allowed to become equal citizens of the nation, basically Jews were given this bargain. You shed your national and ethnic identity, become a real German, become a real Englishman, become a real Lithuanian, um, and you'll be granted citizenship. Just Keep your Jewishness as a religion, okay? And Jews in the West, where, where this, this bargain was offered only to Jews in the West to become integrated, or the term at the time was emancipated. Now, when, when you say West, you're talking West of the Mediterranean Basin, which includes Europe, or are you talking about Western Hemisphere? No, no, I'm sorry. I, I, mean, I mean Western Europe, like Germany and... Uh, All right. Germany, All right. Italy... All the way to gotcha. San Francisco. Um, so, so in those places where Jews were allowed to make this bargain, become a real German, a real Italian, a real um, American, um, and keep your Jewishness just as a religion, Jews embraced it. Yes, we did it. And therefore, for Jews who live in the West, and for Christians who live in the West, that's a perfectly fine definition. A Jew is just like any other member of the nation of a different religion. Here's a German Catholic, here's a German Protestant, and here's a German Jew. For Jews throughout history and everywhere else in the world where they were not allowed to become kind of equal citizens, Jews remained what they always were, and that is a national group with its own national religion, kind of this closed club that mixes all these identities. It's, it's, it's a nation. It has its culture, it has its ethnicity, has its religion, and it's all one thing. And I'd say just one more thing. Um, that is not, it, it, that is not, a, it, it's a problematic thing for Westerners to say, what, what do you mean it's all the same thing? But if you think of it, with, with Muslims, we have a similar kind of, like if you look at an Arab, Arab Muslim, his Arab identity and his Muslim identity are not separable. Okay, they're, they're really fused together. And even an irreligious Arab is a Muslim 
culturally. Okay, and and if you offend his the, 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 if you offend Islam, it, it is a problem even for for somebody who doesn't go to uh, to the mosque and prays five times a day. It's a, so I think in the old world, it's a common th this feature that I'm describing of Judaism is common. In the West, we have this tendency to separate the religion from the nationality nationality um, because of our path in history. So. Uh, so yes, I, I I would define it's it's a nation, which obviously has its own history and culture and ethnicity and uh, and it's and it, and they have their own religion. What occurred 150, 200 years ago that <clears throat> created this Western change of ideology toward Jewish people as to where now they can be absorbed, and what happened before that as to where they specifically couldn't be absorbed. Oh, so let me, let me start the before that. Uh, okay. Look, Jews were... Um, so in back in Roman times, the Roman Empire was a very multicultural, multi-religious empire. Uh, but Jews... And, and, and the way to... Uh, to weave yourself to, to be to, to live in peace in the Roman Empire was to keep worshiping your local gods or your national gods locally and also worship the gods of the Roman Empire, which because again, even there, you see the in, in, in the Roman Empire, the religion of the empire and the state of the empire were fused together. If you rejected the Roman gods, you rejected the Roman state leadership so again so you can see here even there the idea that you can separate religion from nation is from politics is 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 a foreign concept anywhere but the west um any case so the romans invited everyone to join in who didn't want to join in the jews because the jews were monotheistic and religiously jews could not worship their own god and also some you know, Zeus or Apollo or wherever. And so Jews were this oddballs, were these oddballs in the Roman Empire in that they refused to meld into the, to, to adopt the Roman pantheon. Um, and therefore they were suspected of atheism and rebellion. And then they gave good reason for being suspected of rebellion and Okay, so, so from the start, um, the Jews were this problematic group in the Roman Empire. And then with the growth of Christianity, which early on was a, a Jewish sect, um, it became even more suspect. And then when Christianity became the religion of the Roman Empire, the Jews were uh, persecuted because of their rejection of Christianity. Okay, so it's so there's this kind of legacy of the Jews being separate and ostracized by society and by the state, which kind of went into the Byzantine Empire in the in the East and Western society in the West after um, the Roman Empire fell. And so, for throughout the Middle Ages and the early modern era, the Jews were this group in on the sidelines of society. Um, that were always separate. Okay, They're, they rejected the, the reigning culture, Christian culture, and were, you know, ostracized and occasionally persecuted, occasionally killed, um, and and occasionally um, kicked out, expelled from different places. Ba basically, in the late Middle Ages, Jews were gradually expelled from all of Western Europe. First from England, then from France, then from Spain, and they migrated. As they were expelled from the West to Central Europe, and then and that's how they got to Poland and Russia in these huge numbers. So that's now with this was this expulsion based in Christianity moving as well. So as Christianity moved, it kept clashing with non-conforming groups. Which oh no, yeah. You know, so, so no, Christianity was already well established for about seven hundred years by that point. So I think okay. the, the the expulsion of the of the Jews from England was in don't 
don't quote me, but I think around Okay. 1100 Okay. So, what AD, was maybe the what was the core of these expulsions? 1200. Um, oh, oh, it If was it it wasn't, was Christian. It was Christian sent. Th this was the era of the of the Crusades. So there was this okay. Well, that's obvious then. All uh, spiritual right. awakening, and the Crusades were um, w one of their features before Crusading armies got to to the Holy Land to fight the Muslims. Jewish Jewish communities in Europe were suffered violence or um, or, or, or slaughter, um, and so part of this effort to cleanse the Christian nation, Christian uh, nation. I'll, I'll, you see, the problem with nation is that we're now in the last two hundred years in a nationalist era. So nation means Something different than, something different, but. Christendom, yeah, the, a global, the, the effort. a global body, a global ideology, a Yeah, global group. Christendom. The 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 the, need, the desire to uh, cleanse Christendom, which involved reclaiming the Holy Land, number one, but also cleansing Christian society, involved also or led to in some places kicking out the Jews because they're a problem. So it happened in England in the let's say 12th century, then in France, then in Spain in the 15th century. Okay, so that's what happened. And then uh, in the 17th century, the Jews were allowed to come back to uh, to England, and eventually they came back elsewhere, never to Spain, though. Um, Were they allowed and... to return because Christianity felt it had a strong enough foundation as to where it could be tolerant of other groups? No, so... Why were Um, they allowed to return? so in England, I, I don't know... The details in France, but um, and, and in and some Western German principalities that ex expelled the Jews and later on allowed them back. I don't know, but in England specifically, what I do know is that it was tied to the rise of Protestantism. So the um, the Protestant Reformation involved a an effort by Christian reformers. to undo all the corruption and deceit that Catholicism had injected into Christianity. So what the, what the Protestant reformers did, Calvin, Zwingli, um, even Luther, Luther was a big anti-Semite, but he too, what they saw as the history of Christianity was that there was the original church, the primitive church, it was called, and then it was taken over I forget when, in the 4th century, 3rd century, 5th century. At some point, it was taken over by the Antichrist or by, by, by malign forces in the papacy in, in Rome. And they convert, they, uh, di 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 not diluted, they ruined, they, they I, f I can't think of the word, but they uh, misled, they, they, they took Christianity on the wrong path. In the wrong way, they they began to abuse it. They were, Yeah. uh, they were exchanging money for blessings, money for forgiveness, Yeah, and money. I, I th yeah, I mean that de definitely corruption That was Martin too, but Luther's also particular issue. right. Yeah, but but Mm -hmm. even deeper than the corruption, they, they argued that there were theological errors or theological lies, as they saw it, inserted Yes. into the religion. Yes. And in order to bring Christianity back on the right track, we have to go back. to the early church, to, to the primitive church, before it was subverted, subverted, that's the word, before it was subverted uh, and, and, and made crooked by the Catholic church. And how do you get back to the early church? You go back and, and bypass all the Christian, all, all the Catholic scholarship and all the Catholic uh, commentary on the Bible, and you go back to the Bible and you read the original Okay, so so one of the features of Protestantism was always to go back to the to reconnect to the Bible and not to later Catholic commentaries on the Bible, and so and and so Protestantism included the, the Protestant Reformation included a very heavy emphasis on Hebrew scholarship, on scholarship, on, on knowing Hebrew, so you can read the Bible in the original language and not be swayed by all the Latin language. commentary on the Bible. Look, we need to, we Protestants, 
need to break free of all the Catholic structures that were built on the Bible, we need to go back to the Bible because that's how we can connect, reconnect to the original church. And so uh, Protestantism from the start was more, I don't want to say friendly or sympathetic to Jews, but more interested in Jews and more interested in Judaism, not out of altruism or liking Jews, but out of an interest to purify Christianity. And right. so they were interested in Jews, interested in Jewish scholarship. There were a lot of exchanges with rabbis. They were studying the Talmud. All these Catholic, um, Protestant scholars were studying the Talmud. And so there's just a greater interest in Jews and a greater recognition of the Jewish roots of Christianity, and therefore a greater willingness to have Jews among us because they're, A, a reminder of the early church and, and of the early texts, and be their source of knowledge about our religion, the Protestant religion. So that's how it came so, back to England specifically. Right. So now they're allowed back in as groups. Separate still. Right. They're, yeah. They're, yeah. They're, they're, but yeah, they're a group, but they're allowed back into society. They're no longer expelled. What preempted the, okay, now be a border nation citizen and Judaism is more your religion. Right. How did that? So that that is nationalism. So as you know, when we when we talk about modern na nationalism as a movement, uh, we're talking about a phenomenon that's artificially dated to the French Revolution. Again, it's kind of we all understand French Revolution is kind of a catch-all for uh, period. Started a bit, a bit a bit before, came into real prominence a bit later, but roughly in the mid 18th century to the mid 19th century, you have this movement, this intellectual movement that grips the imaginations and the hearts of Europeans from Western Europe through Central Europe, uh, and, and in time also in Eastern Europe. And this belief that Again, remember, these people were, especially in Central and, and Eastern Europe, they're all living in multinational empires. Okay? And part of the resistance to empires was this belief that, no, we shouldn't be governed. We, different nations, different languages, different cultures, should not be governed by some multinational imperial government that is forcing itself upon us. Rather, we should be free to organize ourselves in these families, basically. Okay? The, the, the Serbian family, the Lithuanian family, the French family, the Swiss family, uh, the Danish family. Um, and so this, this spirit kind of was circulating and, and really was given uh, fuel, jet fuel, by Napoleon when he went around, conquered Europe, and liberated these different um, peoples of Europe, it was done in the name of nationalism. He was not conquering them. He was liberating them from their imperial overlords. And he was giving them free reign to organize themselves as national states, allied, of course, to France. Um, and in any case, and so so that kind of ignited the French Revolution and then the Napoleonic Wars ignited or, or intensified this, this move. And by the mid-19th century, by the 1840s, and definitely by the 1870s, it was understood that nations are a real thing. Nations have a right to exist and to govern themselves. And that's when you get the unification of Italy. And the birth of it, uh, and according to the principle of Italian nation nationalism, re, the unification of Germany, German nationalism, and the rise of all these uh, national states that, in time, by the end of World War One, broke up all these European empires: the Russian Empire, the uh, Austro-Hungarian Empire, and, and and you can see it in the map if you look at a map of Europe from let's say eighteen hundred and a map of Europe in 1820, in 1920, you can see before, Europe was like five or six big units and a few principalities. But then by 1920, 
it's like do, 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 different dots, different colors, because you have all these Serbia and Lithuania and Poland. Da, da, da. So in that context, let me get back to the Jews, in the context of this idea and this enthusiasm that all the people who live here and who speak the same language, we're all one nation. So yes, you might be Catholic and I might be Protestant, but we shouldn't be killing each other in a religious war because we're actually brothers. Okay? We're both Germans. Okay? You're Protestant and I'm Catholic, but what really unites us, that's just a private thing, your religion, who cares? What unites us is the fact that we're both ethnically German, we both speak German, we both have a German history and German values and German stories, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Let's be brothers and leave this religion stuff to the side. And as part of this nationalism, even Jews, even Jews were allowed to claim Germanhood or Swisshood or Englishhood, okay? Just like the Protestant practices his religion, you know, at home, in his church, but on the street, he's just an Englishman like any other, then you too, the Jew, if you take off your um, your yeah, kippah and, and, and your special Jewish habits and just become a regular German, then you too will be allowed into the family. And for the first time, Jews were allowed to become regular citizens, to participate, to, to be a part of uh, professional associations, to live wherever they wanted. They didn't have to live in the ghetto, uh, to, um, to, to run for office, to, to vote, to run for office, uh, and in time even to marry into, into you know, I'll give you my daughter even. You know, I, so the, the force of nationalism is really an accepting one. Okay? So much so that 50 years ago, if my daughter wanted to marry a Jew, um, not in my house, okay? Mm. But 50 years from then, yes, look, he's... He's a joke. Would, 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 would I prefer a, a nice Protestant boy? Of course. <laughs> uh, but just like I'm allowing the Catholic boy to marry my daughter, I'm allowing the Jewish boy because we're all German. Okay? And so that's the context in which uh, Jews or Judaism came to be perceived in the West, where this bargain was offered, where nationalism took hold, as just a religion. And, and that's okay. the version that arrived in America with these Central and Western European Jews. Now, this is not occurring in the Eastern area. They are Separate. still a clan. Separate, yeah. It, okay. Yeah. How did the Israeli Jew and the American Jew get so far apart, even politically, where you said, I believe the Israeli Jew is more uh, what we would think of as Republican or conservative. Right. And the American Jew, it's like it, it almost turned into two different cultures. How did that occur within, because at some point, Jews still function as this national body, if I if I go to synagogue or not, if I wear a yarmulke or not, when something happens perceived to be anti-Semitic or anti-Jewish, all Jews have solidarity. Yeah. So yeah. how did how did that come so about? Like I, then, yeah. So like the the separateness. I don't want to over exaggerate because still today, again, and, and you're right. Uh, look, American Jew. Okay, I'll start by answering, and then I'll explain why we shouldn't over-exaggerate the separateness. So the, the basically, Israeli Jews, Jews came to Israel. Where, where did Jews come? So the, the Jews who came to Israel, so okay, I'll, I'll start beforehand. Uh, a small number of Jews, around 100,000, maybe fewer, always lived in Israel, in, in the land of Israel under Islamic rule, under the Muslim empire, then the Turkish empire. And then the British and and then the British conquered that area. Um, but then on top of this hundred thousand Jews or so, in the late 19th century and early 20th century, with the birth of the Zionist movement, the Jewish national movement, um, Jews started coming 
back to the land of Israel after 2,000 years of being gone. Um, and where did they come from? They came from everywhere in the Jewish world, in the Jewish diaspora, except from Western Europe and North America. Mm. Okay. Why? Because in, in, in Western Europe and North America, they had good lives. They were allowed in. They were integrating, assimilating, rising economically. In the places where they were still separate, in the ghetto, not allowed to go to university or not allowed to uh, conduct business, not allowed to own land, not allowed to marry your daughter, uh, in, 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 in many cases, suffering pogroms and you know violence and expulsions and persecution. In those places, they didn't live good lives. And when there was an opportunity to leave, either to leave from there to go to the West or to go to, to Israel, they went. So basically, 100%, 98% of the Jews who came to the land of Israel came from North Africa, Asia, and Russia, or Eastern, Eastern Europe. And so these Jews who came to Israel came with this mentality of still nation, ethnicity, religion, yeah. one thing. The Jews who developed this separate understanding that we're just a religion, they stayed where they were, where they're having good lives in the West. So, so that's how the two groups kind of maintained a different attitude about, about the Jewish nation, about mm -hmm. who and what we are. That said, <clears throat> um, throughout the history of the state of Israel, or even before the state of Israel, throughout the history of the Jewish existence in the land of Israel, um, whenever something bad happened, like, like in 1929 and 1936, there was this major slaughter of, of Jews in, in Israel by, by their Muslim neighbors, and Jews in Western Europe and in North America helped with financial donations and, uh, and, and, and other diplomatic assistance. And the same thing during this, the state of Israel's early years when it was attacked by Arab armies and, and was in economic dire straits, American Jews and, and European Jews helped. Um, and even today, despite the tensions and friction between American Jews and Israel, on October 7th or on October 8th, the Jewish community in America um, Rank and file. kind of really rose and, and helped Israel, not just financially, tr tremendously financially, but also with uh, political support, diplomatic support, and offering and, and going to Israel to join the armed forces. And now, since then, as the dust settled a little bit, some of those tensions before October 7th kind of are resurfacing. But I, I just want to clarify that even though they're different brands of Jewishness, different kind of you know, different versions, different understandings of what it means that I'm Jewish, there still is solidarity. And there still is this understanding that even though you... American Jews, even though American Jews look at Israeli Jews and say, even though you are Orthodox and we're Reform, even though you're right wing and we're left wing, even though you're more religious and we're more secular, we're still we still are connected. You know, we're, you're weird. You know, you're weird and you're you've got these obsessions and you're a little bit embarrassing at times, but kind of like your embarrassing brother, you're still my brother. Okay, and the same thing in Israel. They look at American Jews and say. You're weird. You're got these crazy ideas, and um, but even though you're kind of a pie in the sky, silly person, you're still my brother, and we're still connected. So it's uh, th th there's this estrangement and a little bit of mutual embarrassment, but still there's a sense of familialism. Now you had mentioned Zionism. That is a term that I believe is one of the central, most misunderstood terms in discussing 
the conflict of the Middle East. Right. What is Zionism? And why is this so confusing to so many yeah. different people? Um, but Zionism itself is not confusing. It's Jewish nationalism that is confusing. And I'll, I'll explain. So Zionism is simply the national movement of the Jews. Okay, uh, Zion, the word Zion, is a biblical synonym for Jerusalem. Okay, mm. So Jerusalem has a name, and it has kind of like New York that is also the Big Apple. Jerusalem is also Zion. And, and so when you say Jerusalem, I'm sorry, when you say Zion, you mean Jerusalem, and by extension, the land of Israel. Kind of like how you say Washington. When you say Washington... You can mean Washington, the city of Washington, but it's also well, Washington, shorthand the for the United States. Exactly. Right. So, um, so Zionism is the movement that uh, put on its flag that we, the Jews, are going back to our homeland, Zion, Israel. Right. So if you believe, if you, the, the audience, if you believe <laughs> that the Jews deserve, like any other nation, and, and this requires you to believe that the Jews are a nation, but if you believe that Jews, like any other nation, believes to have, uh, deserves to have a national state, yeah, so just like the Croatians deserve to have a Croatia, and the Poles deserve to have Poland, and the Japanese deserve to have Japan, by the same token, the Jews deserve to have their land, their, their national state in their homeland, Israel. So if you believe that, then you're a Zionist. Okay. So in, in that respect, Zionism is not controversial. Okay. It's not controversial to think that the Japanese deserve to have an, a Japanese state in their ancient homeland of Japan or Poland or whatever. What's controversial is that many people, what's controversial is two things. First of all, many people do not think that the Jews are a nation and deserve to have a state. Okay, Many people think that the Jews are just a religion. Okay, So just like we don't have a Christian state, and we don't have a Muslim state, except for ISIS, um, and then we shouldn't have a Jewish state, because religions don't have states. Because again, we, we all live in a nationalist, we're, we're all nationalists today. Right. Okay? Um, and we believe that nations deserve to have states but religions don't need to have states okay so if you say if you have a problem with the notion of jewish nationalism then certainly you have a problem with the idea of a jewish state okay so that's one group the the other group that has a problem with with zionism is uh, are, are the people who deny that the Jews ever had a history, that, that, that deny that the Jews have a claim on the land of Israel. Okay? And, and they deny it for various reasons. Some argue that the Jews were never in the land of Israel, like Arabs overwhelmingly, uh, Muslims will overwhelmingly explain to you that uh, the Jews are Europeans. Okay? And, and the claim that they and, and their claim that Israel belongs to them, that the land of Israel belongs to them, is a lie. Okay? Now, you can look at the Quran and see that the Quran talks about the Jews in Jerusalem having a temple and everything else, but you know, religions are very flexible things. And over time, they develop the idea that, no, the land of Israel, the Holy Land, is Muslim land, and the Jews were never there, and and therefore shouldn't come back. That's one group that denies the Jewish claim. The other group that denies the Jewish claim are people who think, who say, yes, the Jews were there two, three thousand years ago, but uh, they left. You know, the Jews were sent into exile by the Romans, and you know, after a while, the statute of limitations applies, and you can't come back and claim your land, which has been taken over by other people who have lived there and worked the land. And uh, so tough, you know, you're exiled. 
and and you've lost your possession there. So kind of like the Native America. Yes, yes, yeah. Yes. Yeah, you were exiled, it's too bad, but life moves on and um yeah. Your new home is wherever you are, in Russia, in Germany, in America, etc. And so this, so the, the the Zionism is controversial for those who have a problem with Jewish nationalism, but mostly, I think, for those who say history is history, you cannot now come back and reclaim this land that you lost for one reason or another. How did they reclaim it? How did they get it back? How were they able to come back after... You say hundreds of years? 2,000, almost 18. 2,000, okay. 2,000 years. Yeah. They never forgot. It's in their writings. They know this is the land. How was there a civil uh, presentation? Was there a war? Was there a purchase? How did the Jews, after 2,000 years, negotiate this? Relocation. Yeah. Relocation. Yeah. Um, so in the 1880s, so again, up, up until 1880, roughly, there was a, always a small group of, of Jews who always lived in, in the land of Israel under Muslim rule. Um, at this point, it's still it, in the Muslim empire and then in the Ottoman empire, this unit that we call uh the Holy Land, let's say, this strip of land. Um, it was simply it 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 didn't exist as a separate uh, administrative unit. It was it was part of Syria. So the Syria the, there was a you know every empire has provinces you know, these administrative units. So the unit of Syria had this bit called the, the was its southern part. The southern part of Syria was what you and I now call Israel. Um, and so Jews always lived there. And in the 1880s, when the situation in Russia got really bad and really violent for, for Jews there, and remember, we're talking about nationalism, kind of starting to bubble and sweep the, the, mind, the new mindset of nationalism sweeping through Europe in the late 18th century and early 19th century, it also swept among Jews and gave birth to this uh, recommitment. You know, look, look at our neighbors, the Serbs or Croatians or uh, the um, Lithuanians or, or Germans and Italians. They're embracing their nation, the, their nationhood, their national history, their national language. It also infected Jews who were inspired to re-embrace their national history and national identity and their national language to re recreate Hebrew and um, study their own national history, Jewish history. And so it was this combination of Jewish nationalism as part of the general European culture and the fact that Jews were facing this wave of persecution and violence called the pogroms in Eastern Europe that drove more and more Russian Jews to leave Russia, either to go to the United States there was a massive wave of immigration into the United States. Roughly three and a half million Jews came to America in about 30 years. And a relatively small trickle of Jews coming to, to Israel. Uh, and, but, but, and also Jews coming from Iraq and from Yemen. So, because again, it was kind of in the ether of, of, in Jewish life. Um, and so they came and lived, this was all part of the Ottoman Empire, and so they emigrated and you know, bought land and started living just like just like immigrants do. Um, and then there was a second wave of immigration under the Turks, and then the British in World War I captured this territory. That's when it started being identified as Palestine, because um, the, the British name for the area that is today Israel and Jordan, it was all one under the British Empire, mm -hmm. and it was called Palestine. And under British rule, more Jews uh, kept coming. And then, so, and, and they, again, just like under Ottoman rule, they 
they came and they purchased purchased land from whoever owned it. Usually, originally it was Arab landholders who owned large estates and would sell small bits to, to Arabs. Or if land was unclaimed, then you bought it from the Turkish authorities or the British authorities. Uh, so that's how it was done up until the birth of the State of Israel. In 1948, the British left. There was a partition plan which would create in, so a little bit earlier. So the area called Palestine was split in the 1930s at some point, I forget when, um, between what's called, what was called at the time Transjordan, meaning Palestine across the Jordan River, what we now know today as the state of Jordan. And the British established there a, an Arab kingdom called Jordan. What's, what was left was Western Palestine, what we now know as Israel. Uh, and in Western Palestine, there was this plan of partition between the Jews, that the Jews will get this much land, the Arabs will get this much land, a Jewish state and, the, and an Arab state in Western Palestine. Um, so in 1948, the British left. The, the Jews, by the way, accepted the partition plan, the Arabs did not. And the day after the, the British left, Five Arab armies invaded Israel. There was a war, war of independence. Um, and then in the war of independence is when the Jewish state, the Jewish army, uh, conquered some lands beyond what was the original partition. So again, the partition plan beyond called for- what was partitioned by- Great Exactly. Okay. So because the other side rejected it anyways, a war started and in a war like in a war, land was conquered. Uh, some of the territories that the Jews- uh, had before, according to the partition plan, they lost in the war. Other lands that they didn't have, they gained in the right. uh, independence war, war of independence. Um, and so then, uh, some uh, it wasn't up until then. Jewish land was purchased in the war of independence. Once it was a Jewish state, it conquered some land, right. and then. Uh, 20 years later, there was another war, and then Israel conquered what's called the West Bank, Judea, Samaria, and Gaza, and the Golan Heights. Um, so it was a so combination it. of colonial occupation, Britain being there, purchasing land, and then when England left, there became um, conquering. conquering due to war. Due to war, yeah. So it because was look, basically in... all three things. It was purchase, it was occupation, it was governmental partitioning, yeah. and it was result of war that Israel became, how the, how the return after 2,000 years actually right. occurred. Yeah, so okay. I, I, I'd say uh, up until the point there was a Jewish state, up until 1948, there's no conquest because um, the ruler was the Ottoman Empire or the British Empire. Okay, so they're they're the ones who are holding military power. Um, once the political power, the military power, was Israeli or Jewish, then you had Jewish conquest. conquest. But up until then, it was all purchase okay. un under Turkish and and uh, British rule. Okay, we got. Two minutes now. So this is what I need clarity on for the next time. <laughs> um, number one, why did Great Britain leave? Number two, why if they did, if the Arabs didn't like the partition, why did they not attack Britain? Why did they attack the Jewish people? And um I have a couple more questions on Zionism, but um, well, I can answer these both questions very quickly. So maybe you can have more room for the other question. Uh, okay. They didn't attack the British because the British were gone. Okay, the 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 war of the, the the war between the Arabs and the Jews started the day literally the day after the British left. Okay? The British left, packed up their stuff, and left. The next day, the Arab armies invaded, so there was no British to attack. Just a free for all and, kind of yeah. Um, why did the British leave? So the, the British were kicked out of India 
uh, there was this movement for independence in India, which culminated in Indian independence in 1947. Once the British lost India, now, now in, uh, in Israel or in British Palestine, um, the British were facing the same kind of resistance they faced in India. The locals didn't want them there. The Jews didn't want them. The Jews wanted independence and the Arabs didn't want them. The Arabs wanted to kick out the Jews and to, to reclaim the land as, as a Muslim land. Um, now, as long as the British had India, they wanted the Middle East as, I'm sorry, they wanted uh, British of Palestine course. as a connection for right. trade. Um, uh, So it's it's India. basically the same thing with France and Haiti. France, okay. Haiti, and the uh, Louisiana Purchase. Oh yes, 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 yeah. Once they didn't have Haiti anymore, they didn't need the they didn't Louisiana need, yeah, exactly. territory. Yeah, yeah. Wow, it, it wasn't as useful. Yeah. So so having you know putting down Arab and Jewish resistance was worth it when you For had India. India. Once you didn't right. have India, why are we why taking take the fight? all this damage? Yeah, and so just like they left India, and how did they leave India with a partition plan? Yeah, because once the British left, if if the British were just going to leave, the Muslims and the Hindus were going to slaughter one another, and so in in India, and so they devised this plan. Uh, basically, they gave it, they outsourced it to the United Nations, and the United Nations came up with a plan on how to prevent this mass slaughter in India. We're going to separate the, in, the Muslims from the Hindus. We're going to give the Muslims their own state, Pakistan, and we're going to give the Hindus their own state, India. Okay? And lo and behold, they did the exact same thing in Israel. Okay? Take the Arabs, I'm sorry, take the Muslims, give them their land, their their country in the partition plan and take the Jews. It's just that that's how the thinking was at the time that you can in the United Nations kind of draw up lines and okay, we're going to move right. the Muslims here, we're going to move the Jews there, we're going to move the Hindus there. Da -da. And and look in, in India kind of it worked in the sense that there were tens of millions who were slaughtered and tens of millions who were taken out of their homes. But you had two states, eventually three, um, and you know they've been living in enmity, Pakistan and India, but they were both given their their separate states, uh, and that was the vision of what would happen in Israel, but didn't happen. Well, still got a million more questions because I had done like a pre-production list of questions, and we didn't get to any of them. <laughs> I'm sorry. Because that's my, that's everything my fault you said, no, because everything you told me was something I had a question about. So it was more about okay, wait a minute, I didn't exp I didn't understand that. So in getting into nuance of that, and I and I really think I know it's helpful for me. So it has to be helpful for other people, especially when you're trying to analyze and process the versions of things that people are telling us yeah. about the the history of the area. And as you are explaining to us, a lot of people are taking the narrative from a historic point forward without the context of what happened before. Right. So um, uh, hopefully we can do a part two and keep moving forward to connect this base to now processing what's going on there and the attitudes, the many uh, international attitudes of what's going on there and why this is being looked at so differently than other wars in the same region that are much bigger as far as number. Yeah. And um, perhaps we can put it into a historic context. So again, I'm going to put the link to your book uh, in the description of this video. Like, share, subscribe comment and hopefully we will be seeing you soon for more information thank yes, you sir. dr guy check